Hello everyone and welcome to this topic on aircraft doors for the Airbus A320. At first you may not think doors are very exciting to talk about, but doors are extremely important when we're 41,000 feet in the air. Um, a case in point, there was an accident involving a cargo door, Ford cargo door, that actually blew off the aircraft altogether. This was United Airlines Flight 811. This was on February 24th, 1989. The flight was from LA, from Los Angeles, with a final destination of Sydney, Australia. Um, at the point that this occurred, this was um, at a stop in Honolulu, and they were getting ready to take off from Honolulu. Within 17 minutes in flight, about roughly 22,000 feet, there was a loud thump that was heard by the passengers and crew turned out that the loud thump, um, at first they thought it was an explosion. Um, they actually had, at, the at that time, there was a, a bomb found on another aircraft previously. And they naturally thought maybe that's what it was. Well, this explosion that occurred was, or the sound, was actually a decompression that occurred from the fuselage being punctured through, or blown through, by the impact of the cargo door blowing off and hitting the fuselage. So that's pretty intense. Um, so it burst the fuselage open. And just for the record, I know we're in the Airbus A320, but this particular aircraft was not an Airbus, Air, Airbus A320, it was a Boeing 737 with the upper and lower deck. The, the point is, it's still at the same impact when you have a cargo door literally just blow off, blow open and then just you know blow off and then cause damage to the fuselage. Now you have a decompression issue. Um, so it would be the same thing. Here, um, after they heard the loud thump, um, the actual was going on after the fuselage was burst open. The decompression started to cause, you know, just from aerodynamic forces and the pressure differential started causing the uh, cabin um, floor to just cave in. And when that happened, of course, it disintegrated the entire floor or part of the floor where um, rows G or ILG and H were, and then rows A through 12, where it just literally all those seats were just were just injected out of the plane, which contained obviously passengers. Um, nine people were killed as a result of this. Um, there, you know, there were some injuries from for other passengers, but as far as deaths. Uh, there were, you know, nine passengers um, from that portion that got blown out where the hole uh, remained. So that's what happened. And, uh, you know, again, you might not think doors are a big deal, but just to give you an idea on the additional damage that occurred because of a door, bro you know, breaking off, here's the list. Number one, it damaged the components of the onboard emergency oxygen supply system, so that went kaput. Number two, the debris that occurred from all of this damaged three and four engines, so number three and number four engines. And what was happening with the engines, because there were four engines on the 747, uh, and the three and four had heavy bri vibration, the in one wasn't even reading. One of them had a very little reading that was going to zero. The other one, there was no in one reading at all. Uh, on one of the engines, there was low EGT, whereas on the other, with the complete opposite, it was too high EGT, um, with also low pre engine pressure ratio. Um, the difference is you had engine number four catch fire. So now we have a fire situation. Number three is where the right wing's leading edge also got damaged. Number four, we got dented horizontal and your vertical st stabilizers. Number five, the fa was a failed intercom within the cabin the um, pilots were actually trying to get in communication with the flight attendants in the cabin, um, and, but they were unable to, so that was failing. Number six, the aircraft skin, or at least a good portion of it, was peeled off to the point where you could actually see the stringers and the frame of it. And finally, the other damage was to the flaps. So when the pilot was just declaring emergency landing, um, you know, the flaps were not being deployed properly, which means he was coming in at a higher speed than he would normally for landing approach. Uh, what he did, he did a pretty fantastic job of doing this, um, by the way. At high speed, he still was able to land safely uh, and not go beyond the distance of the runway. 
So that was pretty impressive. And by the way, while I'm talking about this, um, I do want to thank all of you aircraft maintenance personnel for, for working on aircraft and do a good, doing a good job. Okay, I'm going to explain a little bit about why I, mean, I would say thank you anyway, but in particular, the first thought um, from this whole thing, this whole accident, was that it was uh, human error. Uh, the National uh, Transportation and Safety Board originally determined that it was that it was aircraft maintenance that did not um, latch and lock because it's one thing you could say you could lock it but you didn't latch and lock it um, and that has to do with the door locking mechanism so they were thinking that, that it was that at this point they didn't have evidence they didn't have the cargo they couldn't find the cargo door uh, there was a search party that went out to underwater in the Pacific Ocean to try to find anything and they were not able to find it uh, within a certain period of time maybe within maybe you know twice a 12 months or so something like that and they declared that it was a uh, maintenance fault well turn of events was it one of the the family actually one of the casualties family members did their own personal investigation hired their own personal invest or investigators and they found that something was different they found that there was electrical wiring that was a deficiency in that whole system along with the structural design of it of the door and they concluded that that's really the reason why the cargo door just flung open and what's really weird incidentally at that time there were maintenance crew working for United Airlines working on another aircraft um, working on their circuit breaker trip and finding out you know what was causing that well when they were messing the you know around with that the cargo doors on ground the cargo door actually flung open spontaneously and then they were just wait what what happened why is that so it should not have done that but it did it anyway so they you know national safety uh, transportation safety board began to you know reconsider their their first um, submittal on their report so they actually created another report superseding the first one and said it was not due to human error it was just a, a malfunction of the electrical wiring and the structural design so i'm just sharing this all with you because doors kill people um, doors not properly latched and locked or the structural you know the systems design was not you know to um, the most efficient um, level to make sure that it's intact and this is what happened with this particular um, case pretty significant so what I want to do is introduce to you doors um, we're gonna do this whole topic in six sessions and session one like I usually do is is doing an overview giving you kind of a helicopter's view of the different aspects to doors and how we can categorize and begin to organize our understanding of the operations, the components, um, the locations of doors, you know, and all of that. Um, session two, uh, so session one is going to be overview and then session two is going to be specifically on the passenger crew doors. Keep in mind that doors are not all the same. Okay, I, mean, I mentioned doors, we're going to talk about the uh, structural design of different kinds of doors. Um, session two is passenger crew doors, session three is your emergency exits, session four is your cargo doors along with your op operation of them. Session five is going to be your, um, your cabin and your off-wing escape slides. Okay, these are your inflation device systems, and flotation uh, systems. Session six is going to be uh, maintenance, okay, your service and access doors and also your maintenance door. And then there's also door warnings. Of course, things are going to show up on the ECAM, uh, also on your, uh, your flight warning display, so that'll be there as well. Um, but, you know, just I'll mention that, you know, as we go along here, probably in the overview. All right, so that gives you an idea on the different aspects of doors that we're going to cover. Okay, by the by the session's designation. All right, session one. Let's begin with just doors in general. Remember, doors open or close, they're locked or unlocked, and that's in general. On aircraft, that's the case as well. But there's a little extra to it because of pressure differences. Um, when you're at ground level, there's a certain pressure that we have, right? when you get higher up in altitude that pressure changes so there has to be an equalization of pressure between that which is in the cabin and 
the atmospheric pressure, that which is outside the cabin. You have to have kind of a higher pressure inside to keep, you know, keep kind of an a, a equalization with um, with all of that, and also having enough pressure again for uh, human, you know, humans in there to be able to operate their lungs and heart and all that. And that's kind of a something an extra topic that I talk about in in the topic of oxygen when we get into the physics of uh, the physiology when it comes to uh, to pressure against the body and being able to have enough there to operate you know your own body so we have this in the cabin with the pressurization so when we have doors when we talk about doors we have different ones for example we have your passenger crew doors like I mentioned in the SESOV session 2 uh, passenger crew doors which are pressurized because if you're going to Think about doors, think about those that are pressurized and those that are not. Okay, pressurized doors just means that it, it in order for it to kind of stay put, kind of stay in its own little knit, uh, little notch, if you will, it has to have pressure on both sides to kind of create a seal. And it's similar to, think about a, a drain, like if you're trying to take a bath, which I don't know if most men <laughs> don't take baths, but, but you know, if you filled up the tub, you know, at any given time in your life. You know how you use this, this plunger deal, right? You're, it's a you know, little plunger, and you stick it in the dra drain if you're going to fill it up with water, a little plug. It's creating this suction, right? So it's the same idea here, here with these types of doors. And again, this does not mean that every single um, pressurized door is of a plug type of door, what they call plug, a plug type door. It just means that the, the, the effect is, is, is similar, being able to create a seal to keep, you know, keep that um, to keep pressure in the way it needs to be, for example, inside the cabin. So you have cabin doors. If you really want to look at pressurized doors, you've got cabin doors, car cargo doors, and your avionics compartment doors, which are also, also pressurized. So those are your access doors, by the way. So you have two cargo compartment doors. If I say cargo compartment doors or car cargo doors, it's the same thing. I'll just eliminate the word car uh, compartment and just say cargo doors. But these are on the right side. So your cargo doors are on the right side of the air aircraft, so the right side of the fuselage. Um, you have four passenger crew doors. Those are on each of the sides of the aircraft. And then you have four doors, which give you access to the avionics uh, area. Okay. Now, part of your uh, cabin doors is also your overwing emergency exits. You may see two on each side or one on each side. It just depends on which aircraft you're working on. If you're uh, working on the A319 or probably the 18 as well, but definitely the 319, there's only one uh, exit door over each of the wings. Um, if you're working on the A320, there's two on each. Okay, two over on each of the wing over the each of the wings. All right. So then, what about unpressurized doors that we have? Those are going to be mostly your maintenance and access doors, um, your APU related doors, the lavatory service door, your potable water uh, service door. Um, you know, any ground connector doors. Um, we're going to be uh, connecting you know your ground connectors to the aircraft. Now, as far as the, the door warnings, just so you know what happens in the cockpit. The door warnings, um, w when there's a door that's been opened or closed, there's going to be a, an um, auditory sound in the cockpit. Um, so let's just say somebody's trying to open an emergency exit, which, by the way, they can open manually. Um, and, of course, when they do that, you're going to have an emergency escape slide as part of that. We'll discuss that in a bit. Um, but that's what happens is there's going to be a door warning that's going to let the crew know that a door has been opened. Okay, All of that information, all that data, once the signals get sent, they're going to be going to the ECAM system. Um, your main components that are being able to send signals are going to be your proximity switches. Your proximity switches are responsible for sending signals that go to the ECAM system. Now, depending on which doors is going to be depending on what it's processed by. So, for example, if we're talking about cargo doors, cargo doors, um, the data concerning the cargo doors are going to be processed by the landing gear uh, control interface unit one, and then there's going to be sent to the fault warning uh, computer for actually both to the one and two computers. Um, if it's the passenger doors that are opened or the emergency exits 
or you know avionics um, those are going to be you know they're going to be it's going to be different those are going to be processed by the S, the SDACs your SDACs are your system data acquisition remember your system data acquisition computers um, so it's going to be processed by both of those when you have the door that's going to be in a slide armed um, uh, it, you know, it's gonna when the uh, passengers gonna uh, say tries to open a, a passenger crew door, you know, or the emergency exit, then you're gonna have a, a green indicator light come on. It's gonna be called slide armed. Okay. All right. Just kind of give you an idea with door warnings that you have there. All right. Let's go to. Uh, let's start with that. This can kind of go. With yeah, it gives you an idea about the different aspects, what's pressurized, what's not pressurized. Okay, okay, that concludes the overview. That's session one. Let's go ahead and move on to our session two. This is gonna be on uh, passenger crew doors. What we wanna pay attention to here are going to be what's called latch pins. Just kind of keep that in the back of your mind or just write it on your handout, latch pins. Um, and a hook. <laughs> we'll talk about that here in a minute. Passenger crew doors. Okay. Well, obviously, those are going to be for allowing passengers and crew to you know, obviously come onto the aircraft and also to be, you know, exiting the aircraft as well. Um, so you have uh, you have those passenger crew doors. Um, there there are passenger crew doors on each side of the aircraft. Okay, you have two on the left side and then two on the right side of the fuselage. And remember I said about plug type, not all pressurized doors are plug type doors, but these particular ones are. So what kind of doors are passenger crew doors? They're the plug type. Okay, these are the fail safe plug type um, uh, ones that I said that they kind of creates a, a suction or s creates this amazing seal by this suction that's created because you have pressure it's using pressurization on both sides of it to to kind to keep it in place okay and there's a, there's a locking mechanism so it's not like there's no lock on it there is a locking uh, of this now how do you open the door how do you open the door here it because it depends on which kind of door so in this particular case we're talking about passenger crew doors these are opening inwards and then upwards so when you're unlocking it the doors move inward then upwards okay and then they open you know they also they they move that way and they open outwards now all the passenger crew doors are equipped at the bottom of them they're equipped in this and there's a container underneath um, that contains the escape slide okay now just so you know the escape slide it's the you know the, the slide that gets deployed when there's an emergency when that door is in an arm position that's exactly what happens automatically is those escape slides just you know they start getting filled immediately um, that'll be our another session when we talk about uh, those escape slides but each of the crew doors have a locking mechanism and they do have that escape slide or the slide um, the slide raft um, release mechanism and just to differentiate some some aircraft have are, are equipped with a slide raft the reason I say that is because um, not all air aircraft um, are equipped with escape slides that are a flotation um, that are a flotation system um, basically they're, they're not meant to you know, it'd be in a ditching situation, in other words, ditching the plane in the water. So just keep that in mind. It depends on what aircraft you're working on. Um, the locking mechanism, um, that's controlled uh, either with the inner or the outer control handle. So you have an inner and an outer control handle with that. Remember I said there's an arming and a disarming lever. That's going to be on the inner side. Um, when the door's opened from the outside, then the escape slide is going to be disarmed automatically. Now, as far as the structure of the door itself, it's made up, of, and it's probably be a, probably been a long time. If you have your A and P, you probably it, don't even remember. I don't know, but unless you, you're structures guys and you know you're <laughs> doing that for a living right now, um, if you're engine guys and you probably don't even, don't remember, but um, there's the longerons. You've got stringers, right? Your frame. 
Um, the main construction of the passenger crew, uh, passenger crew doors are going to be your horizontal long runs. You've got vertical frame uh, segments, of course, your outer skin. You have the um, uh, members and, and inner skin, which are riveted together to make you know make that structure for that door. And of course, you got fittings and, and all you know stop fittings, etc. All right. Now the door locking <coughs> mechanism. Let's talk a little bit about this. Um, the door um, on here, the door locking mechanism. It's inside the door structure, and that's going to obviously control the locking of the door and also the evacuation system. Okay, evac. We're talking about the evacuation slides or escape slides. It's the same thing. Um, the way the door is locked is a hook. There's a hook, and it's connected by a bell and the bell crank to the locking shaft. Okay. Um, an arm on the locking shaft then forms the the uh, locking indicator that you can actually see. Okay, there's also a safety pin there, which is pre preventing the movement of the door, which might you know result in a double mechanical failure. So just a an extra precaution that way. There's also a lifting lever. Uh, the lifting lever obviously lifts the door because remember I said it has to move. The door is moving upwards until it clears some stop fittings and then it moves outwards. So upwards and then outwards. And then I mentioned about the inner and outer control handles that operate the, the locking mechanism. So you have that. There's a gearbox that's connected um, to the locking shaft and also connected to the lifting lever. That's all part, all the component, you know, different components related to the locking me mechanism of that crew, uh, passenger crew door. Okay. The other, the other thing that you'll find uh, with these is a door damper, an emergency operation cylinder. This is very, like, it's a fail-safe type of um, system in place because what if, you know, I mean, you have wind that can mess things up or it could be something else, but let's just say the door doesn't open completely. You know, something's preventing it from having its full range of motion or, you know, you don't want it to blow out, you know, past its, you know, extending past the range of motion where, you know, it can be operating properly. So what they have here is a do door, what they call a door damper and the emergency operation cylinder. So those are there for in case, again, you have he heavy winds that are causing the door to, you know, make a motion that's going beyond its limits in either, either direction. So be aware of that. And uh, of course, uh, there are warnings regarding, um, you know, the opening and closing of doors. Uh, of course, you want to make sure that if you're working on doors, that you secure them. Um, if there is high wind, usually past 65 knots, um, you, you definitely want to make, you know, be cautious, be aware of, you know, door swinging or make sure it's secured. Um, you don't want to open the, the door if, the wind is more than 65 knots for starters. Also, if you're going to be working on it, you just disarm the emergency control handle. That needs to be in the disarm position. And you also want to put that safety pin there because, again, that pre prevents it, you know, really prevents it from um, operating. Um, the, there's also a percussion lever, which is part of the door damper and the cylinder and you want also that to be in a disarmed position. So this is just warnings uh, for you, uh, you know, your cautions and warnings. So as aircraft maintenance per personnel, uh, you know that those are highly, highly important if it's, if it's deemed a warning. Now in the caution area, and we talk about, you know, our cautions, um, this is just regarding the use of the inner control handle. Um, you don't want to use it to push or pull the, the door. Um, the, the use, if you do use that, um, you can cause damage. So that's just a caution. The other ones are, you know, can obviously, obviously cause injury to yourself. So, you know, you have to be careful with those. Okay. Now, there's, there's mechanical and electrical indicating. The mechanical that you have are going to be visual. Like, remember I said visual indicators on the door itself? They let you know um, the visual. There's a visual indicator on the shaft. I'm talking about the locking shaft, um, indicating the position of the door, whether it's open or closed. Um, also, the girt bar. Remember, I said the girt bar. By the way, is what it allow, attaches the slide to the aircraft. 
um, and that's what, you know that's what keeps it um, is it keeps it in place. At some point at deployment, we'll discuss what happens because that's different. But there's a visual indicator on the GERT bar, and that's going to indicate you know obviously engaged or not as far as the GERT bar goes. Um, electrical indicating, remember I said proximity switches are very key to sending signals, right? So you're going to either send signals to see send signals to the SDACs, you know, or to you know you got eventually you got your ECAM where it's going to be going to on, on that page. Okay, your doors because there's a doors doors page on your ECAM. Okay, so those are just different things to be aware of. Um, there's different conditions of the door status that you'll see on the ECAM since we're on the um, the topic of door. I just mentioned about the door page on the ECAM. There's three, three conditions. One, you're going to have a door symbol that um, is outlined in green when the door is closed. Um, if it's open, it's going to be showing in the color amber. And then the door is replaced by an ambient X if the door status is just not available from the SDAC yet. So those are three, di three different conditions that you'll find on the door page of the ECAM. All right. Okay. Now, just a little on the, uh, because I, we have a session um, that we're going to cover, actually, it'll be session five that we cover on the cabin slides. Remember, cabin slides, I'm including the uh, emergency exit exit doors as well as the passenger crew doors. Okay, that, that'll be on, on that one. Um, but for, you know, now I just want to introduce a little bit about um, the emergency escape slide because it is part of the of the passenger crew doors and there's a release mechanism because that's what has to happen it has a release from the bottom of the door and it's secured there by the girt bar until it gets released okay the girt bar is locked um, it has fittings and levers to keep it in place um, and it's either you know to the fuselage in the emergency mode or it's to the door Okay, so the, the grip bar can be locked uh, to the door or to the fuselage, e you know, either way. So there's different, you know, if, if it's to the fuselage, then it's in the armed mode. If it's in the, uh, or, um, to the door, then that's, that's just the normal mode because that's where it's located. All right. And then you have a cam disc and a roller that connect to the, the emergency control handle and also the outer control handle. Um, here's some warnings for you regarding the escape slide release. Um, you want to stop the opening procedure if there's a red warning light that's flashing because this has to do with residual pressure that's still there that can cause that door to open just, you know, a spontaneous opening. And if that happens, you do not want to be in its path. Um, the doors are heavy. Um, we get to cargo doors, or actually we're talking cargo doors, but um, the doors are heavy. Uh, I can tell you on the cargo doors, they are about 200, and depending on what um, variant, because there's different series on A320s, and some of those doors are going ranging from 238 pounds to, you know, like around 260 pounds um, of doors. So that's, you know, and coming at a you know, high force rate that's a, a significant amount that can you know cause some severe injury to you uh, and or you know people who you're working with so be mindful of that the other thing too um, you don't want to go of course near any pressure sealed doors when the aircraft's pressurized I mean we talk about hydraulic systems and when you're doing testing um, obviously you've got to test it it has to be pressurized but if you're working on certain parts before you're going to do a, a final test, um, you want to make sure you depressurize things and then be aware of those components. Obviously, they're part that are on the aircraft that rely on the hydraulic pressure to operate. So when we're talking about this, um, do not open or go near those pressure sealed doors um, when the aircraft is, is pressurized. Because it's going to happen, you know, the door that opens um, when the aircraft is pressurized, remember what ha I mentioned in the beginning of this um, this instruction about United Airlines cargo door. It just flung open, it blew open, and it caused an immediate decompression. Um, and it was explosive. I mean, it's just you know very very powerful in a very very short period of time. That can kill somebody. Um, not just from the fact that we had 
a chain, you know, domino effect with a puncture to the fuselage in, in the case of United Airlines. But if you're maintenance personnel and you're working on doors um, and you got pressurization in there, because when we get to cargo doors, we're going to talk about the hydraulic, uh, the door hydraulic system. The door hydraulic system, because there's hydraulic actuators that operate the cargo doors. Um, so you're, you're going to have that decompression. And when that happens, those doors will open. And if it's, you know, if somebody's in the way, it can kill them. All right, so we've got the, that warning. And of course, the other warning I mentioned about that, you know, if you see the red flashing light, um, that means you've got residual pressure. Be careful. Now, on the uh, kind of a general broad stroke on the, the um, emergency escape slide release mechanism, there's a, an emergency, as I mentioned, the ECH or emergency control handle, is what I'll call it. Um, is set to the armed. Okay, if it's armed, then the girt bar connects the inflatable assembly to the floor fittings. Okay, there's a floor fittings. Armed is the girt connecting to that. So what happens? You know, what happens when you open the door? Okay, well, as the door is op opening, um, that movement of the door pulls that inflatable assembly um, into into the back pack board, so you have that there, and it has to, and it's going to be inflating too. We'll talk about the bottles that are used to inflate these, and obviously they have to inflate within seconds uh, in an emergency situation. But there's still a little bit of a you know some seconds there to to actually get it inflated. But you have that inflatable assembly that's released, um, and then there's the reservoir gas supply that's starting to flow through the hose and the aspirator. So again, this is all to inflate um, the slide itself. And it's just also letting you know that if, you, if for some reason there's a you know failure of the automatic um, process, there is a manual inflation handle that can so that it can be still inflated. Okay. Now some of the uh, escape slides have survival kits along with. Uh, not all of them are equipped that way. It just depends on the series of Airbus A320. Um, and I'm not going to mention certain uh, numbers. Just know that some may or may not. That's that's the, the point of that. Okay. And there's um, diagrams that we can share with you. We're going to look at that you can look at so that you can get an orientation of um, the relation between the different, you know, amongst the different components, you know, as far as where they're located and positioned. Uh, inside the door structure. All right, so that covers your passenger crew doors. Okay, so just remember that all passenger crew, do, uh, crew doors are equipped with an escape slide, and um, their main structural component is your horizontal longerons. Um, there's vertical pieces there also to be part of that. Of course, the outer skin, etc. But that horizontal longeron is a, is a key component of that structure. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our session three. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cover some knowledge checks. If you recall from other lessons, um, knowledge checks are the same as review questions as, gee, that might be on the test, pretty much. So let's go ahead and, and just get your hand out right now. Just get it out and um, take notes, you know, mark, mark it as we go along uh, and, and follow these questions. All right, session one. Question number one. All aircraft doors are pressurized. Is that true or false? That's false. Remember I just said that if you're going to think about this mentally and divide doors up when it comes to aircraft doors, right, you've got, you have those doors that are pressurized and those that are not. Question number two. What are the what are the pressurized areas where doors exist? Okay, option A, avionics compartment, comma, cargo compartment, comma, cabin and cockpit. Or the second option, accessory compartment, comma, control panel doors, comma, APU access doors. Okay, so first option, remember I said three, the cargo the, the, the cabin doors, your cargo compartment, and your avionics compartment. Those are your pressurized areas. All right, number three, 
Emergency slides are installed on some of the aircraft doors. Okay, that's true. They're, they're not installed on all the doors. They're not installed on the maintenance doors or service doors, right? Question number four, what is the difference between a service and a control panel door? Okay, a service door is option A. A service door is for maintenance, allowing for the service of a system or component. Or is it option B, a control panel door is mainly for servicing? The answer is A. All right, let's go on to number five. And you see your handout now, we're doing some questions for, you know, that come from session two. Okay, question number five. What is one of the main structural components of aircraft doors? Is it A, vertical long garons, or, a, or B, horizontal long garons? Okay, it's B. Number six, passenger crew doors are not equipped with escape slides. Is that true or false? That's false. I just said all the passenger crew doors are equipped with them. Number seven, in order to prevent doors from extending too far or falling short of minimum range of motion for opening, there are mechanisms in place to ensure this doesn't happen. What are these? Option A, emergency operation cylinder and the door damper, or option B, alternate opening mechanism and the door damper. Now it's question number, is the, I mean it's the first answer, right? option A. Question number eight, what main component inside the door structure causes the door to lock? Okay, is it A, a locking shaft or B, a hook? I know I mentioned both. But the hook is actually the answer. Okay, number nine, what controls the door locking mechanism? Is it A, the inner and outer control handles, or is it B, the locking shaft and only the inner control handle? All right, that's gonna be question, uh, it's gonna be option A, inner and outer control handles. Control the door locking mechanism. All right, question 10, and then we'll start session three. The door is lifted by a lifting lever that moves the door upward and then outward. Is that true or false? Okay, that's true. Can't remember what I was describing that. Okay, now we're on to session three. And session three is on, you know, we're gonna be talking about the um, emergency exits. Okay, so emergency exits are gonna be over your wings. So let's just look at that a little bit. All right, your overwing emergency exits. Be aware that, again, it just depends on A320 or A319 that you may be working on. On A319, there's only one on each wing, uh, one over each wing. Um, on the A320, there are two over each wing. And these can be manually opened by passengers because in an emergency situation, that needs to be the case. So, you know, they're, they're called doors or hatches, you know, either way, mostly hatches. Okay, emergency exits. By the way, um, by FAA, by the federal um, um, definitions of things, hatches are considered doors. So they follow, have to follow in compliance with with the definitions and the construction construction of of uh, doors on aircraft. All right, uh, the operation, um, the way this works, just releases and infl it's going to inflate the. Uh, escape slides because you do also have s escape slides uh, on the overwing emergency exits. Now the ones that are over the wings are a plug type. Okay, that's similar to the, your passenger crew doors. They, these are the that the type I just described about creating this suction so that it stays in place. Um, this is what you have here. Okay, it also has a slide release mechanism. Um, the two operation modes that you have here are normal and maintenance mode. So this has to do with maintenance, it has to do with you. The normal mode, um, remember I said remember the latch pin just in general, okay. Um, we have a normal mode with the emergency exits. There's a latch pin um, that will either be in an armed position or not. And the latch pin is in an armed position when it's when the latch pin is actually extended. 
And if it's in a disarmed position, it's the opposite of that. It's going to be retracted. You may see that as a test question, by the way. So what happens when you um, remove, you know, let's say you're, you're in normal mode, if you're going to remove, remove the door, okay, then the slide release mechanism operates the emergency escape slide automatically when you're removing the hatch. Now, if you're in maintenance mode um, and you have the latches in the disarm position, okay, so once you, it's in maintenance mode, it's already in a disarmed position because you know we don't want to have um, the removal of the hatch when you're doing a maintenance procedure. That's what that does. Remember I said about proximity switches? Here we have proximity switches that are going to be monitoring um, the position of that latch pin and that all inf that, that information is, still gonna, is all going to be, be sent to the ECAM. Okay. And there's preventative things. Um, there's a warning system or a warning signal that will um, will be given um, just to prevent an accidental operation of the hatch locking mechanism. Okay, so there's a warning uh, system for that. And how does this work? This is the, uh, the overwing. Okay, emergency exits. Um, this, and we're talking about the operation of it. We're going to talk about a little bit removal of it, installation of it. How do you install, you know, how do you install the exit door? Well, you know, there's different mechanisms, and I'll just kind of mention them in order br briefly, but at least you'll get the, uh, the concept going from, you know, number one, number two, number three, etc. So when you talk about installation of it, um, you would definitely want to make sure, again, make sure the latch pin is in the disarm position. Um, you want to also remove the rigging pin from the hatch frame. After that, you're going to take that hatch and set it with the hook brackets uh, and then push the bottom of the hatch into the opening so that the brackets engage in the pivot fitting. It's like a little puzzle. Okay, just be careful when you're doing it. Um, and then, of course, I'm um, sure, you know, two people probably are working on that. Make sure that also that the lip is sealed properly and it's not caught in the pivot fitting. Just be mindful of how you're putting that in there. Of course, follow exactly how the a uh, aircraft maintenance manual is telling you how to do it. Okay, but that's that's what you do, and then it's just kind of pushing um, the top of the hatch into the opening, so that kind of just kind of almost like you're clipping, almost like you're putting a battery into into place, like an actual battery into whatever you know device that you're needing to put it in. It just kind of snap, like almost like a snapping into. Um, it it kind of has the same idea here. Um, with being able to put that in place. So, and there's um, some diagrams that can help you uh, get a visual on that. And then removing it, uh, to, just to get access to the control handle, you want to pull the cover flap down from the recess. Okay, then once you have that cover flap removed, um, then you're, that a switch is actually going to start giving warning Remember, I said proximity switches are going to start giving warning signals. Um, just to tell the um, crew that the hatch is not correctly locked, it's not, not in place, if, if it's removed. Okay. Now, if you're doing maintenance, if you're doing a procedure for maintenance, um, then just open, you're going to open the cover flap to get access to the top of the latch pin. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to turn the latch pin a quarter turn counterclockwise to undo it. Um, and that enables, you know, that to retract and then they'll be in, in the disarm position. Okay. But just again giving you a brush jerk on that. Just you're gonna follow procedure um, at your MRO from the aircraft maintenance manual. Alright, then the escape slide that's attached to the emergency exits or exit hatches. Um, these are dual lane. Now in some aircraft that may be single lane depending if it's a smaller airplane uh, the A318, A319 are, you know, they're kind of they're small, um, relatively speaking, and the, those may have single, but A320 has a dual lane, just to get more people, you know, at once to exit as fast as possible. So those are installed above uh, the wings. Okay, so you have those on there. 
Now, there are reservoirs. These are the inflation reservoirs uh, for the off-wing slides. Those are installed in the forward end of the aft cargo compartment. So if you wanted to know the location of those, those are where, where they're located. Those are where there are. Um, you've also got a, a valve assembly that's connected to the release mechanism um, so that, you know, it can have the operate and, and deploy. Um, the inflation system, just so you know what it's made out of here, what we're talking about. Inflation system has to do with the valve regulator assembly, um, your inflation reservoir. Um, that's going to be your bottle. If you see bottle, that's that's the same thing. That's your reservoir. Um, the, the actual uh, poundage in the bottle is three thousand. Should be anyway, um, three thousand psi. And of course, you have a regulator on there so that you know it's not coming out at three thousand psi uh, to inflate the the device. You know the the slide, but um, but it's coming out you know a bit at a time at a lot lower um, psi. Usually somewhere around, I think, 300 or something like that, 300, 400 PSI. And then you have two aspirators as well because um, you don't want to have an overpressure either. So it's, it's just all part of keeping the right amount of pressure uh, to fill uh, the and, and fill and inflate. Um, the inflation reservoir is an aluminum. Um, you do have a gauge on there that shows the pressure. So that again, you can know uh, controls the gas flow. Those are your, your that's your valve regulator assembly, right? So it's controlling the gas flow that's uh, coming from that reservoir and going to the aspirator. Now the aspirator itself uh, is made up of plastic. It has a flapper valve, flexible hose assembly, and your inlet assembly. Um, so that's all. So you know that's part of how that works and about how that gets in there. Um, what happens when you have the off, uh, off wing escape slide inflate? Um, that's going to inflate when you remove uh, one of the escape uh, um, emergency exit hatches. And it's automatic. There, there is a manual uh, mechanism, but this, this would happen if, if that's removed, then that escape slide is going to deploy immediately. Okay. All right. So that gives you an idea what the emergency ex exit hatches, what they're referring to exit hatches, their doors. Um, let's go ahead and cover a few questions. I may or may not go all over all of them. Um, just so you know, there's roughly about 30 questions for the entire topic, but you have the questions obviously um, dispersed amongst the different sessions. All right. Go back out, uh, back to your handout. And let's go to question number 11. Where are the emergency exits located? Option A, is it over the wings or B, near the cockpit? Okay, it's over the wings, right? Okay, in what position does the latch pin need to be in order, to, uh, in order for the exit door to be disarmed? Okay, in a disarmed position. Is it option A, retracted, or B, extended? Okay, it's going to be A, retracted. Latch pin retracted means it's disarmed. Question number 13. In what position does the latch pin need to be in order for the exit door to be in the armed position? First one was disarmed, now we're talking about armed position. Is that going to be uh, A, retracted, or in the extended? It's going to be the opposite of what I just said. <laughs> so we just covered disarmed. That's going to be the retracted position. So naturally, the arm position is going to be in the extended. Question number 14. The emergency exits can only be open from inside the passenger compartment. Is that true or false? I know I did not mention it thus far before I went to the knowledge checks here, but you can actually open it from either side. Let's talk about the emergency exit. So the answer is false. Number 15, any able passenger can manually open the emergency exits at any time during flight. That's true. Okay, number 16, what are the two modes of the emergency exit doors? Or hatches. 
Is it a normal and alternate? Or the two modes are normal and maintenance? All right, it's B. Okay, right, normal and maintenance. All right, so that covers number, you know, session number three. Now we're going to go ahead and go on to session four. This is on cargo doors. Um, there's a little more involved with cargo doors. Remember I said no two doors are the same. By the way, since I just said no two, no two doors are the same, um, the, the, the cargo doors are not interchangeable. They, they may look alike, but there are pin connectors at the bottom that are part of it that connect. Um, that, that it's just not it's not the right configuration. So it's, it's just that's the reason this pin the pin configure connecting conf connection configuration is, is not the same. So they are not interchangeable even though they look they look alike. All right, cargo doors. All right, session four. Um, as we're talking about cargo doors, we're going to also be talking about the electrical control system for the cargo doors, and we're also going to be talking about the door hydraulic system. All right, so keep in mind that there's a separation of there's aircraft hydraulic systems, which if you've been uh, through hydraulics already, that you're familiar with the blue, yellow, and green. Okay, your blue, yellow, green hydraulic systems for the aircraft. Specifically here, I'm talking also about a hydraulic system, but this is the like a sub, you know, for the sub meaning a subsystem, sub sub hydraulic system because this is specifically the hydraulic system that operates the cargo doors. So we're going to have these two systems, these subsystems of electrical and hydraulic coming into place here or play here when we talk about the operations on cargo doors. All right, with cargo doors, um, the cargo doors, if you recall from overview, the overview, they're, they're on the right hand side. Okay, there are our aircraft um, right um, on the fuselage. Okay, so there's two uh, on the right side of the lower fuselage. They are labeled, so even on ECAM on the door page of the ECAM, there's going to be FWD for forward and AFT for aft. So your forward and aft cargo doors are what defines those two. And remember what I said, they, they might look exactly alike, but they are not interchangeable, so please pay attention to part numbers again for each of the components or each of the doors. Um, and if it absolutely, if you had to replace the aft compartment door with the forward one um, or the other way around, whichever, um, you just want to make sure you have the right configuration of um, pin connection um, in order to do that. But uh, again, that's, I would just say, you know, obviously just follow the aircraft maintenance manual. I'm giving you some information. Um, now, it depends on the series as to um, the differences as far as you know they're not being interchangeable but you know you've got structural design differences you know and then like I said you have the pin connection configuration that's different for each of the of those doors you know forward and aft. Here's some warning again um, for your safety because your safety is important um, do you make sure or be aware that you, the cargo door does move um, and um, you want to make sure that it's you know, its range of motion is not in the way, there's not something in the way of that range of motion uh, you included. So please be careful when you're working with all of that. Remember what I said about hydraulic system? These, these cargo, cargo doors operate hydraulically. They're controlled electrically. All right, let's talk about the forward cargo door and then we'll go into the aft cargo door because they are, they are slightly different. Forward cargo door. Um, just to give you an idea about structural uh, material, uh, they're made of sheet metal and the machined parts. Um, obviously, they're designed and engineered, you know, with the the, the tent, uh, torsion, I should say, the torsion resistant um, material. Because why? Because we have wind. Um, if wind um, catches the door at some point of opening, uh, they can just you know really cause some serious damage with that uh, with that door, and so. There are limits to it, but you know, for the most part, the cargo doors are designed uh, and engineered for handling in, in certain wind speeds, typically up to 50 knots. Now, there's a manually operating uh, locking me mechanism that's part of um, the door, um, and that's there in the closed position. You also have an electrical door control system. 
as well as the hydraulic system. So here the electrical door control system is going to start an electric pump. Okay, remember there's an electric pump and the electric pump um, is actually of the yellow hydraulic system. So this electric pump is going to be responsible for pressurizing the hydraulic, I'm talking about the door hydraulic system. Okay, so that it can transfer that energy to the hydraulic actuators. The, excuse me, the door, yeah, hydraulic. The hydraulic can run uh, door actuators. All right, so you have the electrical door control system. And um, the other thing to be aware of, uh, when you have the pressurization of the door hydraulic system, all right, so after you have the electrical, um, the electric pump of the yellow hydraulic system, you know, operating, it's pressurizing that door hydraulic system. Once you have that pressurization, um, there's one thing that it, that won't happen. Um, that pressurization is not going to happen when you have the locking, locking mechanism in the locked position. Okay, so you have a command signal that's going from, that's electrical, right, going to the hydraulic system, but it's not going to happen if the locking mechanism is in locked position. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Also, it's going to be there's going to be some signals because we don't want to have a, a cargo door that's partially open that should not be partially open. Maybe it should be it should be closed, and therefore there's going to be signals uh, going to the ecam and also the, the master master caution lights or lights are going to start coming on in the cockpit. Uh, you have those those particular indicators and warnings. Um, okay, all right, and just some extra warning. I know I keep mentioning about doors and the wind and all that, but um, you don't want to open the cargo doors if the wind is more than 40 knots. Okay, so you don't want to open them if the wind's more than 40, and you definitely need to close those doors before the wind hits. Uh, up to 65 or gets up to 65 knots. Okay. Also, your access platforms, if you're doing maintenance, um, you don't want to have those at a certain height that, you know, would obviously be in the way of the movement of the doors if they're moving. So, I, I, I don't believe in common sense. Uh, I'm an instructor um, in another realm and I take nothing for granted when it comes to students. So, um, and, and, and just so you know, in the industry that I that I teach and I've been teaching for the last 17 years, um, it's a it's a it can be deadly. So it's important that you know these people, participants, are you know being very mindful uh, with everything that they're doing. Okay. So anyway, a little side note there. All right. Now that was the forward cargo door. Now what about the aft cargo door? Okay, it's almost the same. There are slight differences, but it's almost the same as the forward um, compartment door. There is one difference for sure. There's an extra fairing um, that's attached to the outer skin of the cargo compartment door. Now be aware on different series there may be some slight differences um, maybe with the um, the way that the locking mechanisms may be. I'm not going to go to, into all of them. There are different ranges of series in which you have those differences. The best thing to do is obviously follow, you know, the very one that you're working on and the manual that pertains to that particular series and, you know, etc. But they just just know that there may be some slight differences with um, the locking mechanisms. All right. Um, okay, so that gives you an idea just as far as the app cargo, do cargo door, it's it's slightly different. It runs pretty much the same as the forward cargo door. All right. Now on the operation of the cargo doors, um, you have to release, okay, the cargo door mechanism. And how do we do that? Okay, you first have to pull the locking handle. There's a locking handle, but you got to pull it away from the door. And then in order to access that locking handle to begin with, um, you've got to push the handle flap automatically inboard. When you push that, then you're able to access the locking handle. And then you're, what you're going to do from that point is just pull that locking handle away from the door. Okay, and that releases the door. Um, 
Now, um, when the hand handle is pulled um, until the limit lever stops the movement, then what different things are going to happen? Okay, I could go into all the little mechanisms and better to show you on a grease board or whiteboard, um, like I like to do. But just giving you an idea, you've got your uh, you got lever mechanisms, um, your link rods, um, your link lever, your safety shaft. Um, it's going to turn the cams. Um, this is kind of a regular mechanism, actually. When we talk about, um, um, you know, like in mechanical engineering. So your, your mechanisms are there. And you can see some of the components and how they relate to one another as far as position from, from the diagrams. And then to show you, show you a little bit of different um, types of locks that may be uh, installed in those systems. Okay, let's go a little bit, just touch a little bit on the electrical control system for the cargo door, uh, cargo doors, and then we'll go also, I'll talk a little bit about the door hydraulic system, you know, on, on these cargo. So, with the electrical control system, you know, what is it doing? Um, electrical control system, you know, is going to, its job is really to control the hydraulic system. Because remember what I said, the electrical, electric control system is uh, controlling an electric pump, you know, of the yellow hydraulic system in order to pressurize. But it has to know, well, how much to pressurize this hydraulic system. So what's happening here, okay, you've got proximity switches again. <laughs> proximity switches, um, they, by the way, the cargo doors have, they each have their separate circuit, of um, electrical circuit. The proximity switches, okay, remember I said before about pro proximity switches sending signals. Now, with here, when we talk about cargo doors, the, um, the component that it's sending signals to is going to be the landing gear control and interface unit, okay? And that's if the cargo door is released, okay? Then you also have the manual selector valve, and when that's operated, then you have that proximity switch also sending a signal to the um, LGCIU. Okay, that's what it does. So either either one, you have proximity switches sending signals um, to it. Um, there's the manual selector valve. We'll get into the two valves. There's an electrical valve, or what they call the electrical electro manual selector valve. Just easy to say, electric valve versus the non-electric one, which is manual um, selector valve. So those are your two. We're going to get a little bit into in a little bit. Um, all right. So what happens, of course, is you have these signals going to there. There's the logic um, of the LGCIU that's processing the signals, and then it's going to produce an output signal to a relay. Okay, so let's say the aircraft's on the ground. Then what? Okay, the land. Then you're going to have that landing gear position relay transmit, you know, the output signal to the time relay. And what is that going to do? Okay, the time relay, relay is going to energize that electric pump. Remember I said the electric pump of the yellow hydraulic system. Okay, so it's doing all this, sending those signals through so that it can energize the relay so that it can, you know, get the electric pump going from the uh, yellow hydraulic system. And then what happens after that? Okay, well, we got a hydraulic system to deal with and that'll be next. Okay, but here we are. we got the proximity switches that are operating that way. And it could be, you know, through an electrical or the electric selector valve or the manual selector valve. Now, once that occurs, once those signals are getting through to commanding um, the electric pump to then, you know, do some work, now what is its job? Okay, it's going to be actually moving, uh, pressurizing the hydraulic system. We're talking about the door hydraulic system. And now we're onto the cargo compartment door hydraulic system. On the hydraulic system for the cargo compartment doors, it controls the operation of the doors themselves. And then we'll talk a little bit about the door actuators because there's they're, they're dual. There's two of them together in parallel. Um, but that's what the hydraulic system does. It's going to be um, pressurizing to operate the actuators to operate the doors. Here you've got the including of the like I said duplex door actuators. Um, there's two for each cargo door. There's also two manual selector valves 
Okay, meaning there's one for each cargo door, not two on each cargo door. So there's only one on each cargo door. And then on some variants of the Airbus A320, uh, there may be an electromanual selector valve. So that's your, when I said electric valve, electric set selector valve, that's what, what it comes, what, what it is. Okay, so the system gets its hydraulic supply from the yellow hydraulic system. Underline that, that's actually a test question. So you have the door hydraulic um, system that's supplying the actuators with hydraulic power, and then you have the actuators that are extending to open the cargo doors to the outer side. Okay, and just a side note, um, the actuators, you, the, uh, this whole, um, the actuators can actually operate both the forward and the aft cargo doors at the same time when that gets, um, when that happens, when that mechanism happens. Okay. And again, there may be some slight differences between the different series, but, you know, that's just so you are aware of that. Now, the electrical selector valve, where is that located? Where is that installed? That's going to be on the yellow ground service panel of the aft right belly fairing. That's the yellow ground service panel. That's where that's located. Okay, and your valve, in this particular case, a lot of them, you know, have, they have different configurations. Um, here you've got a control valve. In there you have a hydraulically operated main valve. And then you also have a leakage restrictor. Alright, um, the electrical selector valve, what is its job? What is it doing? Okay, it's controlling the normal and the manual mode. Those are the two modes of the door hydraulic system. All right, I know I've talked about different modes, you know, earlier from different sessions and like, wow, you know, and there's also, you know, like four of the other um, on manual, we have four different modes. On the electric um, selector valve, there's, there's two modes. Okay, you have normal um, and then, you know, you have uh, the, the, uh, you know, the manual one. So normal and manual. Okay, and wh what it's going to do when you have that solenoid that gets energized, it's going to move that control valve in the posi position which, you know, lets the fluid operate the main valve. Okay, so control valve is operating the main valve. The pressure puts the main valve in position. That way that the hydraulic fluid can flow to pressurize the hydraulic system. Okay, now there's some, some, you know, just like we have check valves to ensure that we don't have an overpressure or pressure relief valves that are installed in lines, right, in the hydraulic circuits. Well, we have something similar here in that we have a, what they call a leakage restrictor because we don't want to have, um, we don't want to have, you know, too much in there. Um, you think leakage, I mean, oh, we don't want to have a leakage of fluid, but it means that we, ha we may have residual um, pressure. Okay, this is residual pressure that's in the system, and we want to get rid of some of that. Okay, so that just that restrictor is there so that it can uh, take that and um, send it to the return line. Okay, that gives you an idea on the electrical system. Um, you have the door hydraulic system, and you know, then we're, we have the operation of the cargo doors itself. But let me talk a little bit about the manual selector valve and door actuators before we do that. So let's look at the manual selector valve. Because remember I said the electric valve ha has the two modes, normal and the manual modes. When it comes to the manual selector valve, you have four. And they are the extension you know, extension mode, the neutral node uh, mode, um, the intera mode, and then you have your, you know, retraction. If you have extension, you have a retraction mode. Those are your four for the manual selector valve. That's still controlling the operation of the cargo door. All right. Now here you still have a proximity switch that's internal, um, and that's part of the door control system. And what the proximity switch is doing in order to have an operation at all, right, to have a sending of signals, is you got to close the circuit. So the proximity switch is going to close the electrical circuit 
when you have the selector of the valve in the open or the closed position. So don't misunderstand me. I'm talking right now. I just mentioned open and closed. So those are positions versus modes. So here in the open or closed position, when you, you know, have um, the proximity switch is going to close the circuit circuit when the selector of the valve is in an open or closed position. Okay, and that usually, you know, starts the electric pump going. Now the extension mode. Um, the extension mode is going to make sure that the high pressure fluid can flow through the valve to extend the door actuators. Obviously that's why it's called extension mode. Of course the opposite is going to be the case when we're talking about the retraction, right? Retraction mode. So, you know, it's going to make sure it's pressurizing on the retraction sides. Now how can you get a hold of this manual selector valve? How can you manipulate it? Okay, well you're going to access it through an access panel. Um, this is actually going to be accessed through removing the floor panel in the forward cargo um, under the access panel. And there's, there's certain designations as far as the location, but at least you'll have an idea. Well, I, I just want to mention that the idea, not specifically uh, the designations. Um, it was important just, just knowing that you have to remove the floor panel in the forward cargo compartment. All right, that's on the manual selector valve. Now, what about the door actuators? Okay, let's talk a little bit about the door actuators. Um, those are installed between the actuator uh, attachment fitting on the door structure and the actuator beam of the fuselage structure. Those are where they're at. And they extend in parallel. So they're expanding, expanding, um, extending together. And when they do, they're kind of evenly distributing or taking on the load um, of the cargo door. Um, but what happens if one of them fails? Okay, they're both, they're both in parallel to handle the load of the cargo door, but what if one of them fails? What do you think will happen? Are we going to be able to, st you know, still have the door open? Okay, the answer is yes. Um, if one of them fails, uh, one of the actuators is actually able to continue to perform, which is pretty amazing. That's good. Okay. Now, what about extension of the door actuator? Again, about the high pressure fluid, remember when it's flowing through the ports, because there's different ports in the um, um, door actuator. And when you have that high pressure fluid going through there, there's going to be obviously the piston of the door actuator is going to extend. And then once it's fully extended, um, it's going to allow the poles on the piston to, you know, to um, the end to move around on the, the lock and it'll just allow that to happen. And kind of the reverse with the retraction of the door actuator, um, although except for that you have it going through a different port. There's two ports on the actuator. You've got port A and port B. Port A is for extending the actuators and then port B is for a retracting of them. Okay. Um, you have uh, some check valves. You also have a hand pump because what if you can't, um, you know, what if something was failing on the electrical system and therefore now you just didn't have electrical, an electrical pump um, pressurizing the hydraulic system that affects the, the actuators? Okay, what if that fails? Okay, there's a hand pump um, that's installed on the yellow ground service panel and that um, can be used for, for pressure, pressurizing the hydraulic system. There's also a pressure relief valve, of course, uh, you've got your normal check valve that opens the supply line um, at a certain pressure. Um, the bypass check valve um, is also there to make sure that the supply line is depressurized um, after the cargo door operation. Okay, so you've, you've got the valves there just in kind of a your normal circuitry to ensure the operation and safe operation, I should say, of, you know, obviously of this, oper uh, the doors, uh, operating the doors. Okay, that gives you an idea on door actuators. Um, just a little bit before we conclude this session, um, I wanted to mention a little bit on the uh, operation of the cargo doors from different two different types of operation. Number one, of course, you have normal operation, which should be automatic. Uh, if for some reason automatic fails, uh, you're going to have uh, manual operation. Cargo uh, operation in normal 
um, is going to be here and you're just going to have the movement of the door locking handle okay in the horizontal position that's going to turn the locking shaft and the locking hooks are going to engage okay um, and there's a mechanism there that you know it's pretty standard as far as it goes and the proximity switch um, which stops the signal to the ecamp you know system if if everything's running properly then you're going to have no problems um, with uh, anything to be showing on ECOM as far as warnings, things like that. Okay. Now, after you have a normal closing procedure, let's say you're you're running that, um, then make sure that you close the access panel. Now, what about manual operation? The manual opening procedure, if you're going to do it that way, um, it w for either one, either the forward or the aft cargo door. Um, let's just say that there's a failure, like I said, a failure of the electrical system or the electric pump fails because you can still have the electrical system run, but something's wrong with the pump and the pump needs to be replaced. Okay, so now what? Okay, well, manual operation. Um, with this, you're going to put the door locking handle in the unlocked position. Okay, there's locked and unlocked. Make sure it's in the unlocked position. And you're just going to follow the same procedure as normal operation. Okay, only you've now put it in unlocked position. And you just want to make sure you have, you know, two people to be doing um, this on the manual operation of it. And why is that? Because you got to have one to, you know, turn and hold the selector on the control panel to the open position during the whole procedure, the whole opening. Um, so that's why. Um, the operation of the selector um, on the control panel that's going to move the manual selector valve. Remember I mentioned the manual selector valve. Remember I said the manual selector valve has four modes. One of them is extension. You have um, the retraction. And then you've got also the neutral and there's also an intermittent. Maybe I didn't mention that earlier, but those, the other two are neutral and inter, um, intermittent mode. Alright, so that's part of that. And remember the hand pump is there, so that enables you to, again, uh, manually get pressurization using a hand pump. Okay. So that gives you a little bit of a, an idea on the manual operation of the cargo doors. Okay, let's go to, it's time for some knowledge checks. Let's go to some test questions, or some potential test questions. All right, session four, cargo doors, question number 17. This is a true or false statement. The cargo door system has an electrical and hydraulic system. Is that true or false? It's true. Number 18, the forward and aft doors are interchangeable. Is that true or false? That's false. I just said that they look alike. They're equivalent. They seem cl close to get, you know, they look almost identical, but they are not. Okay, two re can you come up with two reasons? Okay, remember what I said? One of them is just flat out structural. Depending on the, on the series, on Airbus A320, um, one of them is just flat out structural design. The other one, you know, I'm not calling it by definition structural design, but there's the pin connection configuration that just won't work. It won't fit if you tried to, you know, fit in the, an aft door or there should have been a forward uh, door. Number 19, which aircraft hydraulic system is used to pressurize the cargo door hydraulic system. Is it the yellow or the blue aircraft hydraulic system? It's option A, right? It's, not, it's the yellow system. Question number 20. How does the electrical control system control the door hydraulic system? Is it option A, by the use of manual switches, or B, by the use of proximity? switches. You're right, proximity switches. I've been mentioning about the word proximity a lot. Uh, question number 21. Question 21. On the cargo door control panel, when does the green light indicator come on? Is it option A, when the door actuators are in their extended locked positions, or when the door actuators are in their retracted unlocked positions? That's going to be option A in their extended locked positions. 
Question number 22, where is the manual selector valve located? Okay, this is the manual selector valve. Okay, I know I mentioned about um, probably uh, the service panel, okay, but the, here the manual selector valve is actually located behind the control panel. Behind the control, control panel. Question number 23, where is the electroman manual selector valve located? Okay, so don't, just don't get confused. All right, option A, on the yellow ground service panel or on the blue ground service panel? That's option A on the yellow ground service panel. That's where the electric selector valve, or what's, you might see it as electro manual selector valve, that's where that's located. But the manual selector valve is located behind the control panel. Question number 24, what two modes does the electric selector valve have? Okay. It's, is it option A, um, manual and electric, or normal and alternate? Okay, it's option A. Uh, question number 25. What modes does the manual selector valve have? There's actually four. Okay, option A, extension, neutral, and closed. Or is it option B, extension, neutral, it actually is interim. I, inter, I said intermittent, but it's actually interim. It, it just it means the same thing. And retracted. Okay, extension, neutral, interim, and retracted. Okay, that's the answer. there Because there's four modes, modes of the manual selector valve. All right, last question of this session. Number 26, the door actuators extend in parallel and evenly distribute the load. And you know, in order to operate the cargo door, is that true or false? That's true. Remember, I said they do extend in parallel, and they, they each you know carry the the load evenly when they're both operating. Okay, now let's we've concluded session four. Let's go ahead and go to session five, and then we have our last session. Um, last last session will be last session six. Um, session five is a little more on the um, escape slides because remember I said you have escape slides on the um, and on the door cabin doors because your cabin doors are your uh, your passenger crew doors and your over wing over the wing right your off wing um, exit doors okay that's where you're, you'll find those all right so let's just touch a little bit on this. Um, and then we'll go on to our final session. This one, this one won't be that long, because I already talked about escape slides, you know, earlier. But with the escape slides, remember I said that some are equipped for a ditching situation. Ditching meaning, you know, they're, they're you know, pilots. The only last ditch effort is getting into water, uh, and so therefore some of them are equipped with rafts as well, or double as a raft. Um, it depends on what series. I'm not going to name the series. I'd rather you just you know, deal with whatever you are working on at the uh, at your MRO. But the escape slide raft, okay, if you have the raft, it's made up of two inflatable chambers. You have an upper and a lower that make up, you know, make up that raft. Um, there's also survival kits that may be supplied with them. So, I mean, typically they are. Um, that's usually how it is. But anyway, those um, are stowed in the stowage compartments in the cabin. And then you also have uh, part of the escape slide Okay, the, the actual slide has the inflatable assembly. Um, you have the inflation system. You have a decorative cover, and then you have a back, uh, excuse me, pack assembly. Okay. So, and again, there may be some little differences or variations depending on what series. You also have a reservoir. Remember, it's also known as a bottle, but it's, you know, basically containing the ga gas. It's an inert gas, so it's not hazardous. Um, but it's in the inflation reservoir that's made up of aluminum and that usually and, and should be actually pr pressured at 3,000 psi inside the bottle. Now when it gets you know um, released uh, to go into the, uh, into the escape slides then obviously it's regulated you know when it does that. 
you have a valve regulator. Okay, so I was just saying it gets regulated. Well, this is how, because you have a valve regulator assembly that's going to control the flow that's going from the inflation reservoir to the aspirator. Okay. All right, so that's what the inflation reservoir does, applying that gas to the inflatable assembly through the aspirator inlet assembly. Of course, this is all when it's activated. You also have some flapper valves that are part of the aspirator uh, system. Uh, your one-way check valve, so at the inlet, so you don't have it going the other direction, right? Okay, just seeing about the the uh, gas. It's an inert gas of nitrogen. There may be a mix of nitrogen and carbon dioxide uh, that make that up. Okay. Also, there's a GERT bar. Um, you'll see that on the test. Uh, you should be familiar with the GERT bar. Okay, G-I-R-T. Uh, GERT bar is basically that which is you know hold. It's kind of it attaches on the slides and the, um, sl the slide rafts, um, those are attached, you know, to the emergency escape slides and then um, that attach that to the aircraft. Um, so it's, it's all, you know, there. So let's say the door is in an armed, when it's in armed condition, when the door is in the armed condition, that means what? That means the escape slide is going to be ready to deploy automatically. So what happens, the grit bar is going to cause the slide to deploy automatically. That's, that's what the grit bar does. Um, so you have that. There's also a telescoping grit bar, okay, so that enables it to, you know, go further. But if it has slide rafts, um, uh, if that series of aircraft has them, then that, that particular one has the telescoping uh, grit ba bar installed on, on those slides. Okay. The, um, the grit bar can be locked. Um, by the emergency control handle, okay, and it's either to the fuselage in the emergency mode or to the door in the normal. So normal mode is your disarm mode, and there's also an indicator that's installed at the forward end of the girt bar, so you can visually see whether or not it's in the armed or the disarmed position. Okay. Um, if you're doing maintenance, by the way, just kind of a thing to note maybe mentally or, or whatever. Um, the GERT bars, GERT bars stay with the aircraft. Um, if you're replacing the slide or slide, slide raft itself, the GERT bar doesn't come off. All right. Um, you also have your central, your interphone system. Um, that's going to monitor the slide bottle system. Okay, this, uh, these are, it's important because again, the bottles have pressure and you don't want to have them with too little pressure that it won't be able to inflate uh, properly, you know, inflate the, the escape slides properly. So, you know, failures there need to be no noticed. Um, and all of that gets reported to the um, programming and test panel, your PTP. Okay, so when it comes to those uh, failures, that's where it's going to. Um, your system status mode, that's going to monitor the current status of um, the CIDS, your SIDS, okay? So, you know, so just shows the description of the failure. Um, when there's uh, the mode of maintenance, um, then you're going to, it's going to show there. Um, again, just monitoring the slide's uh, bottle pressures. Okay, now what's the, t what's the normal um, bottle pressure? It's 3,000 PSI. Okay. All right. All right. Let's talk a little bit more. Uh, just one, a little bit about the uh, escape slides, and then we'll move on to our final session. But um, there's a, the inflation system. Um, it's going to inflate when you remove one of the emergency escape. Um, say like emergency escape, but emergency uh, exit hatches. When you remove that, then you're going to have um, the inflation of the escape slide. Okay, and then remember about the latch pin, how you remove the, um, the emergency hatch. Okay, so that, that's what happens um, with that. This is just, again, the inflation system. Uh, I know I talked about it earlier, about the different parts to it, like the reservoir, obviously, you know, the bottle um, where it's keeping the pressure um, and, uh, of that gas. And then, you, of course, you have flapper valves and all that installed in the aspirator. 
Okay. All right, that, that concludes our session five. Uh, that's going to go through a few knowledge checks. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. If you have questions about, you know, some of them, please, you know, email. Um, page number, or excuse me, question number 27. Uh, what component attaches the escape slide to the door? Okay, or the fuselage. Okay, is it option A, girt bar, or B, spring hooks? Okay, I just mentioned it's the girt bar. At what pressure are the inflation bottles for the inflation systems? Is it 1,500 PSI or 3,000 PSI? Okay, it's 3,000 PSI. Number 29, if the door is opened with the emergency control handle in the armed mode, what happens immediately? Okay, is it A, an oral warning sounds indicating the need for manual inflation of the escape slide, or B, is it the inflation of the escape slide happens automatically? Okay, it's, it's the latter, it's the inflate, it's option, option B. Okay, all right, we are on to our last session and there won't be that many questions, otherwise we could be here for a long time. There are a lot of, it's a lot of good information, but again, I don't wanna inundate you with too, too much. All right, let's go to the maintenance and service doors. This includes access doors that are just mainly for there for inspection um, of different components without actually using it as a service portal what I call a portal, but you know, a door. Uh, so let's, let's go over this. Access and service doors. Okay, you have your external access and your service doors. Those are just gonna give you access to do maintenance, okay, on different s components and whatnot. Now, in addition to that, you do have other doors um, that are your control panel doors, mostly for inspection, um, visual inspection. Okay, so what are some examples of some service doors. Well, your service, so somebody's is servicing something. Uh, refuel and defuel, right? So you have that, your refuel and defuel panel door. Um, you also have a conditioned air uh, connection door, your high pressure air ground connector door, um, your aft and forward cargo compartment door control panel doors, your potable water service doors. You also have an external power receptacle door and your aft lavatory service door. Your access doors are going to be your uh, ones related to your avionics, the avionics compartment, uh, as well as the APU. So they'll be related to that. Um, your, let's just talk a little bit about the external power receptacle door. This one's installed in the lower fuselage. Um, that's a quick opening type of door that opens outwards towards the front of the aircraft. And that's going to give you access so that you can connect uh, ground power to the aircraft. Okay, that's also where you have your inner phone, your inner phone service. Remember, I, if you did, uh, if you already went through communications, um, I talked about that inner phone um, bay service panel. That's that's what that is. Um, another example is your uh, avionics compartment doors. Those are rectangular. Um, that gives you access to the avionics compartment forward and aft um, to be inside of the avionics compartment. Okay, those, those have inner candles that are connected to the locking mechanism. Okay, and then you have po your potable water service doors. Those are installed uh, in the lower fuselage. Those are quick opening also. So some of, some of the ones I'm just mentioning now are, are your quick opening. They're, they're not pressurized. Okay, and diagrams can give you an idea of where they're uh, positioned, you know, in relation to other doors uh, on the aircraft. All right, let's go ahead and do our final set of questions and then we are concluding this topic. Question number 30, which doors give access to the high pressure ground connector for the ground air conditioning slash air starting system? This is a simple question, okay. Okay, option A, ground service condi conditioned air connection door or B, your ground air conditioning slash air starting door. Okay, well, it's option B. All right, question number 31. There are three ground service panel doors for each of the three aircraft hydraulic systems. Is that true or false? Okay, that, that's true. All right, last question. Question number 32, regarding door warnings, the data about car door, or cargo doors are processed by what computer? 
Is it option A, the LG CIU-1 or the SDAC? Okay, it's going to be option A. Okay, cargo doors is associated with the landing gear control interface unit. Okay, so that's the answer. All right, this concludes the topic on doors. And um, if you have any additional uh, questions or your comments or you know you want whatever you have you want you want to talk about regarding this, um, please feel free free to reach out to us. Um, thank you for your participation in this, and I look forward to having you in the other topics.